Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. And Merry Christmas Eve. I hope that this holiday is gonna be absolutely incredible for you. As for me, it's 5.30 in the morning and I am grinding. Hey, success is always about sacrifice and working hard. So I am gearing up and I'm heading off to Chicago. I'm hooking up with David Dobrik. I'm gonna do some fun videos as well as Jim Nessie and the Alligator Bubba. Have you ever seen an alligator climb up and down the stairs by himself? Well, you're about to do it today. It's gonna be absolutely incredible. What do you say you Go ahead and comment down below and let me know what you're doing for this Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And while you're down there, smash that like button. We have a five hour drive ahead of us. Let's go ahead and hit the road. All right, guys, so I made it to Chicago and of course with David Dobrik and Bubba, the amazing alligator. We're gonna have some fun today, aren't we, David? We're gonna be hanging out with Bubba. We just got we just got some food at McDonald's. He ate all our chicken nuggets. So we have to drive back, get some more nuggets, and then we're gonna be on the prowl again. It's gonna be a fun day. Of course, I'll have the link in the description for all of David's stuff. It's gonna be really great. And then later on, we're going by Jim Nessie's place to see his cool animals. About to have a good time, right, Bubba? Rawr. <laughs> Two, one. Do it. I'll kiss him first if you do it. See? Now jump on. Oh, that will jump on. Oh, he's coming for you. He's on your lap. That's okay. You like people. The seat. I'll put your legs back. Watch, watch, watch. No way. No way. Put right your head on it. It is. Uh, he has like thorns. Okay, Bubba, we'll see ya. We'll go visit Bubba in a little bit. We're gonna have some more fun. See you later, Bubba. All right, guys, so we had so much fun with David Dobrik. I mean, what a great guy. He's just got a heart of gold. Of course, you know, people are getting freaked out by animals when we kind of surprise them with them, but to a person, everyone changes from being like scared to all of a sudden being like, oh my God, that is so cool. And people love Bubba and they love Daisy. So it is a great way to kind of change people's perception about animals. I realize it's kind of entertainment and stuff like that, but I'm telling you, I'm here, I experience it. And Every person fell in love with every animal we showed them. They might have been freaked out at first because they were shocked they weren't expecting a big alligator or a big python, but afterwards they're like, oh my God, that was so cool. So regardless, I am en route to Jim Nessie's place, the owner of Bubba, and we're gonna check out some of his animals. I am super excited because Jim has been doing this educational thing for the last like 40 years. So he has touched so many people's lives and certainly Bubba has changed unbelievable amounts of people's perception about reptiles. So what do you say we hit his place? and see what he's got going on. So we are in Jim's place. This is just absolutely amazing. This is kind of the idea in a way that I want my next door to look in a, in a way where they have like all these cool displays. You can see they're like really kind of zoo-like and uh, here's Jim right here pulling out. What's this guy's name? This is Dragon. Dragon, oh my gosh. And listen, Jim has been doing this for how many years have you been doing this? Well, 40 years professionally, Brian, but I'll tell you what, working with animals, since 1952. Oh my gosh. A okay. passion of mine. And, and I gotta tell you guys, between Bubba and animals like this, look at this big Asian water monitor. Beautiful. Oh my Beauty. gosh, is he just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at this thing. And again, you know, Jim has all these enclosures like this that are just so cool. I, I'm so inspired by it because this is exactly kind of what I want to do. And I can only imagine the, what, hundreds of thousands of people you've changed minds? I mean, at least. At least. At least probably millions of people. Yeah. Between, you know, person to person, and then of course online, because Bubba's videos, like millions and millions of views. I mean, literally, he has touched so many people's hearts, and I just think it's amazing. And, and you can just see how incredible these animals are. Oh my gosh, I need a big water monitor like this guy here. I was very blessed and fortunate to work with the late, great Steve Irwin, the yes. crocodile hunter. And the thing that was so great about Steve is he was contagious 
enthusiasm. Yeah. Steve was so passionate about what he did, and he was the same guy off camera. He was yeah. real. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing, guys? I mean, literally, Jim would work with Steve Irwin whenever he came into the country. Him and Bubba would travel around. They'd do Jay Leno. They'd do movie stuff. They'd do all kinds of stuff. So Jim literally was a personal friend. Of course, one of my heroes, Steve Irwin. And uh, I mean, that's just amazing. So uh, gosh, let's just keep on looking. And look at this guy. This, this is another water monitor that's actually even bigger. Take a look at that guy right there. This guy's even a bigger monitor. Holy that, cow. That monitor is about eight feet long, weighs probably about 85 pounds. It's heavy. Oh my gosh, that thing is cool. Yes. I mean, these are like literally like dinosaurs. And again, the thing that's great about these monitors are they can be tamed like this. You know, so many monitors are a little bit kind of sketchy when you handle them, but these big water monitors, I mean, you can certainly see. I mean, look at just how they're just like puppy dogs. Oh, yeah. I mean, and that's the type of stuff that changes people's minds. That's what I love about Jim's stuff. The animals he uses are really ambassadors. So, you know, kids and everyone can kind of just get up and close and touch them and uh, really get that experience and really kind of create that curiosity that eventually causes them to become animal and reptile lovers. Guys, take a look at this chunky monkey here. This, of course, is a granite Burmese python. Just take a look at the size of that guy right there. That is a chubby monkey for sure. It is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, take a look at that thing. I absolutely have always loved granite Burmese pythons. I remember when the first granite Burmese came in, a guy named Eric Kreider brought him in from Vietnam. And uh, it's of course a recessive color and pattern mutation. And that thing is just crazy. Look at how beautiful its head is. Oh my gosh. Very thick, it's very heavy. And the, the other thing too is, it's pretty damn long. Yeah. I'll bet you it's somewhere between 14 and 15 feet. Yeah. It's a good sized snake, but uh, you know, it's more, it's impressive because it is, like you said, a chunky monkey, it's yeah. thick. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that thing is absolutely cool. And the thing that's a little nice about Burmese is they're a little bit slower than reticulated pythons. So when you take them out, you don't have to be as concerned about chasing them around. You can see he's just kind of chilling. He's like, all right, what's up here? But uh, well, I've always loved Burmese. Everyone knows that was my very first snake ever was a Burmese python. So I've always had a soft spot in my heart for these guys. Burmese python for me, it, out of all the big snakes, I always loved bringing them to a show because the Burmese, would typically what I would do is line up a bunch of kids shoulder to shoulder and of course have them put their arms out and we'd pull it out of the container and all the kids would get a chance to feel and touch the snake. But the thing I always did was I'd ask kids questions. Do snakes have bones? And of course a lot of kids say no. And I go, they're vertebrates. Yes, they do. I said, feel the backbone. You can feel the ribs. So the kids are actually touching and feeling and learning. Do pythons have teeth? Uh, we think so, yes. Do snakes have ears? And they're looking, I go, and they go, no. I says, good. I said, do snakes have eyelids? And they look and they got an eye cap, a clear scale. So it's a learning thing, you know, but the kids get a chance to hold it. And what I like about the berms is they're laid back. Out of all the big snakes, they're my favorite. Yeah, and again, it's again, like Jim said, it's a learning experience, getting the kids to get hands on with these guys, because if you can feel it and touch it, you start to care about it. As I absolutely love the art in this place. I mean, take a look at this, of course, Jim is a dinosaur lover. I'm a dinosaur lover, so this is absolutely incredible. But we have a retic here. Oh my gosh, take a look. Look at how long this retic is here. And, and Jim, who did this? This is amazing. A guy named Jason Kostelik. He actually did all the illustrations. My daughter wrote a book called Bubba, A True Story About an Amazing Alligator. Oh my gosh, that's he awesome. did all the illustrations in the book. And the way he worked together with my daughter made it so real with the words and the illustrations. So I had him paint, as you can see down here, my whole uh, exhibit room, because like I said, I love dinosaurs and all, and he did such a fantastic job with the painting. And it was all freehand, he just, Start painting. Look at this guy, has got Komodo dragons here. This retic still keeps going and going and going and going and going. Oh my gosh, look at this. Oh my gosh, we've got some wildebeest yep. over here. I mean, wow. And there's a croc, a couple of crocs. A couple of crocs. Yep. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. And a little retic over here. Oh my gosh, I love it. I've got to do this for sure. His name is Spike. No, Spike, you're not gonna eat. No, 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 no. You're not eating. No, 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 no. You're not eating. Get back in there. Look at this. Nile croc. Came in as a rescue, another rescue. 
Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Yeah. Take a look at that, guys. And remember, I actually caught a really big Nile crocodile in the Josini area in South Africa. So to see one of these guys, it's just, it's awesome. You could definitely tell the difference between a crocodile and an alligator because of that pointy snout, you know? I mean, they definitely have, as well as the way the teeth actually interline. I mean, look at those jaws right there. That is impressive. I got him, he was like, seriously, he's about eight to 10 inches long when I got him. He was, somebody was trying to sell him. Oh, wow. So of course I snatched him up right away because I was worried about who was going to get him. Yep. Wanted to make sure an animal had a good home. And you know, for animals, for me, if they get too big, I have so many contacts that I always can find homes for animals if need be. Right. Well, I tell you what, that Nile Croc is ridiculous. Beautiful. Oh my beautiful God. Animal. I didn't know Jim had a Nile Croc. Yeah. That is freaking awesome. Get your head back in there. Get your head back in there. No, I'm not feeding you right now. You're yeah. not eating. Look at him. I had to tell him he wasn't eating. Look at him look. Like, is that something for me to eat? Your camera? <laughs> And of course, here's the infamous Bubba. Here you are, buddy. What's going on? Oh my gosh. So tell me a little bit about this. This is obviously, you've got a, a, a filtration system on this. You've got a nice basking area where Bubba comes out. I built this about uh, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's a concrete block. I epoxied it, as you can see. I do have a swimming pool filter and a heater. The water temperature stays somewhere between 75 and 80 degrees all year round. The basking area is so it can, you know, haul out and dry off. Now, I don't have the basking area real hot. In the old days, people told me you should go with 250 watt lights. The problem with 250 waters, these are 125s. The problem with 250s is in an artificial setting like this, their skin will dry out and start to crack. So I back down the wattage to 125. So when the weather's nice, you know, and I'm on two and a half acres here, Bubba likes sitting out on my driveway. <laughs> so he'll come out of the pool, I'll open up the door, he'll walk across the basement floor, walk up 13 stairs, I'll open up the garage door and I'll have the big overhead door and he'll go right head out and lay on the driveway because he loves that sun and the heat. And I have a pond right there, he sits 30 feet from my pond. Now the pond is 90 feet across, it's 18 feet deep. Oh my gosh. It's loaded with yeah. fish. Oh wow. Loaded. And guess what? My buddy has an opportunity because I like to see what's going on in his head because I'm fascinated. He will sit out there and when he gets too hot, I always ask kids when I'm at a school, what do you think Bubba does when he gets too hot and he sits out on my driveway? They go, he jumps into the pond. I go, ah. No he doesn't. He turns around, comes back in the garage goes to the door, the door is closed, he bangs on the door with his nose to get back in the house, to walk back down the 13 stairs, walk across the basement floor and come back into his pool. <laughs> How freaking amazing is that? I mean, and that, you know, I think Jim is kind of, you know, setting the precedence to the fact that a lot of people don't think crocodilians are smart because they think they have that little tiny brain, but yet he's not only trained him, you know, hand signals, voice signals, but he also, he knows the routine. He climbs up the stairs, down the stairs, into the van, out of the van. Obviously, he knows that he shouldn't go in the pond and he doesn't. So Bubba is really kind of setting the standard for kind of intelligence and crocodilians for sure. And that's amazing. Jim. He's intelligent, he is incredible, and he has a, just like a sixth sense about him. When we work with special needs kids, he is so, and he's gentle with everybody, but when we did the Downs Walkathon for all the Downs kids, and he was giving all the Downs kids rides, if you looked into his eye, he's got that real gentle look in his eye. And the eyes don't lie. I always look in his eyes and know what's going on. He's a male, of course. Males get considerably bigger than females. The biggest females can reach 10 feet. Uh, you know, and again, guys, I mean, if you ever have any opportunity to meet Bubba, if you're in the Chicago area, uh, online, do whatever, I mean, this animal is unbelievable, and I have witnessed it change so many people's perceptions. Even today, people that were scared, frightened at first, fell in love with Bubba. I mean, it's amazing. The amount of blood, sweat, and tears that Jim has put into Bubba is amazing to me. And he inspired me with RJ, my alligator. That's exactly why I've done the things I've done is because of Bubba. I hope one day RJ will be as impactful to people as Bubba has been. So this has just been amazing. Jim, thank you so much for having oh. me. I mean, this has been an awesome day. All right, guys, well, we are getting on the road, a long road home, about four and a half hours. Let's do it. 
All right, guys, so it is seven o'clock at night. I still have about four and a half hours to drive. I'm in the middle of nowhere. I have no idea where I am, but I've got a ways to go. I started at four o'clock in the morning, and actually, I have to stop pretty soon because I am going to edit this video and upload it on my way home so that it is ready for you guys. You have to keep grinding to be successful. That's what it's all about. But what an amazing day. We had a great time with David Dobrik. What a great guy. Jim Nessie and Bubba are always amazing, and I hope that you guys enjoyed it, and I hope that you have a great Merry Christmas Eve and tomorrow Christmas Day. Thank you so much for tuning in, and you guys mean the world to me. I love you guys so much. Can you do me a couple favors before I head out? Can you smash that like button, as well as turn on those post notifications so you know when I upload a video, which is every day, seven days a week at nine o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. Remember to be kind to somebody, and I promise I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>